When I think about creating something, I just want to be able to have the viewer create a story. This is the Bold Artist Podcast. You have answers and you're expressing them in your art. Your art is important and it needs to be seen. Welcome, and let's get started with today's episode. We're here at episode two of the Bold Artist Podcast. We have a guest artist on the show today that you are going to love. But first, we need to have a moment of celebration because our show took off with a blast. Our launch has been so successful. Before we could even prime the distribution channels and get our show sent everywhere onto apps, you all were already downloading, listening, and leaving reviews. And so on behalf of my co-host, Charla Marskalk and I, we just wanna thank you so much for how you've shown your love and support. On the pilot of the Bold Artist Podcast, if you haven't had time to listen to that, I encourage you to zip back in our podcast shows and have a listen to the pilot. Sharla and I shared our hopes and our visions for this show. And in that show, we said that we're here because we believe in artists. And it was an incredibly rewarding feeling to sense that you believe in us too. And by downloading, listening, and reviewing the show so early here in the podcast, it gave us that incredible sense of being loved and off to a good start. So thank you so much. I really am going to introduce you to our guest artist, but first I need to put on my news anchor hat for a moment and give to you a little bit of bold school news. We have the announcement that coming up, we have new painting courses in Bold School. And you're gonna wanna know about this, especially if you're a portrait or wildlife painter. Charlotte Marskalk and Corey Mortgat, instructors within Bold School, are hosting some courses on painting hair. That's right. Corey Morgan has a long hair painting class coming out and Charlotte Marskalk has a how to paint a beard class. And so if you've ever struggled with painting hair, and I know I have, these will be the classes for you to check out at boldschool.com. Funny story, many years ago as a novice painter, I painted a lion and a lamb and no joke, I took a fine, tiny paintbrush and painted about 2,000 strands of hair on the lion's mane because I didn't know any better. I wish I had had this course way back then. And that painting's hanging somewhere in Australia, and every time I think about it, I just want to cringe because that lion is having such a bad hair day. There really is a technique to painting hair <laughs> and beards, and you will wanna find that out on boldschool.com. So now I'd like to introduce you to today's guest. Luzdi is a portrait and figurative artist located in Massachusetts, USA. Luzdi's story is one about pursuing freedom to paint how and what she wants to paint, not just what everyone else expects. We here at the Bold Artist Podcast have felt strongly like artists are really gonna connect with Luzdi's story and relate to what she shares. Luzdi shares about her journey to freedom in subject matter, how she approaches her color palette with both a mix of planning and intuition. And she points out that one of her biggest breakthroughs comes from understanding value through Bold Color Bootcamp. A link to that is in the show notes. So let's go over and meet Luz D. Luz D. Rivera, we are so happy to have you on the show today. Welcome to the Bold Artist Podcast. We are both on YouTube and in audio on all the podcast apps. And today we're so excited to hear more about you. So do you mind just sharing a little bit more about yourself? Yes, and thank you. For me, it's a real pleasure to be here with with you, Mary Janelle, and you know, as part of the podcast for Bold School. So thank you for the invitation. It's so You're nice. You're so to welcome. It's our here. pleasure. <laughs> yeah. So yes, yeah, so I'm Lucy Rivera. I have been uh, painting for. I say that since I have 
knowledge I've been painting, but mostly I've been doing that since 2014 when I said like to myself, I really want to um, start doing this more in like a consistent way. Um, I am also a musician and a photographer. Um, so I did a lot of that prior to painting. Um, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico, so I'm Latina and recently moved to Massachusetts when I'm located right now. Wonderful. I love it that you just have creativity flowing through you being, a, I'm also a musician and photographer. So we're on the same page. Yes. <laughs> yes. So then how did you come into your painting practice? So I, there was a moment that I, that I thought that I wanted to do something different than photography, um, which I think they are very much related. And so I remember wanting to do some research about, you know, probably I started searching for old masters. What were they like? What was that like? What were the movements? I, I, and I was very attracted to Fauvism and Impressionism and Expressionism. Um, and it was, I noticed that it was the use of color that attracted me the most. And then I tried to look up for contemporary artists and found some that I think uh, people who really like bold color know uh, them, like Boca, for example. He does amazing, like celebrity, large scale uh, uh, paintings that are just really good. Um, there's another artist like Peter Terran. I really like his mark making. And there, then, then there was Charla. <laughs> I then remember there was Charla. <laughs> Char Charla for me was kind of like the in between be between Boca and and Peter Turin because she had the use of amazing bold colors, but a softness, um, you know, and kind of like just a, a neutral kind of way to see colors that I just really loved. Um, so I followed Charla since 2014 um, to, to the point that I remember her doing like half of, uh, she had a photograph that was half painting and have a self portrait that she did. Um, and I remember doing something similar to that because I found it so, so beautiful and so amazing. So I was really, really surprised and glad when I saw that she had um, recently, when I saw that she had the, the class. So see how, how crazy life is. You, yes, you never yes. know. <laughs> so it sounds like you knew Sharla long before she founded Bold School. You followed her. Followed her. I did. That's that's amazing. So were you one of the first Bold School students that signed up in, in her community? I believe so. Um, I mean, she has mentioned that I was kind of like part of the, the group that were kind of the founders of Bold, Bold School, uh, Bold Color Bootcamp. Um, yes. And it has been a, a, a beautiful, great experience. I'm just so curious, what is one thing that was a big takeaway for you from doing Bold Color Bootcamp with Sharla? I would say to this day, the, the most precious thing that I learned from Bold Color Bootcamp, which is understanding values. So when I started, again, I, I was attracted to Fauvism and the use of bold colors but I didn't really know kind of like match, let's say the grayscale of the, you know, with the colors, what did that meant in terms of the values and learning a little bit more about that was what I think changed like the depth of my paintings and, and the way that my style has evolved has a lot to do with, with that key um, learning experience that I had. I love that. And I have the same similarity. I was actually just telling Charlotte yesterday, learning about values changed me. And so <laughs> we shared that experience. So Luz D, can you give our audio listeners a visual picture of what your artwork looks like? Sure thing. I, I would say it's bold color. It's vibrancy. It's feeling emotions through color. So when you try to imagine um, you know, what a painting of mine could look like, you definitely are going to see uh, vibrancy and multicolor. I usually use um, a minimum of four to five. That would be the minimum of colors that I would use in my paintings. Although when you look from a distance, um, maybe you see less colors, but as you get closer to, to the painting, you can really see like the rainbow that's 
underneath uh, there, which is um, what I really love about about my style. Yes, and let's uh, let's share a bit about your subject matter as well, because I'm not sure we revealed that yet to the audio listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so usually I would do. I just love painting people. Um, mm. humans, right? That could be from babies to, you know, women, men. Um, I just love painting humans. I do animals as well, but my passion is, um, you know, my, my subject is just figures and portraits. That's what I, mm. what I really love to, to do. And you are excellent at it. Excellent Thank work. You. I have enjoyed perusing your website and learning <laughs> more about you as an artist, but also just seeing the variety that you have in your portraiture and figurative work. And one thing that really stood out to me when I was looking on your site was the diverse emotions that your work evokes. Everything from serious and perhaps a little sad or thought provoking. And then there's a little humor too. And I see happy emotions and cheerful qualities in your work, especially in the vibrancy of the color. And uh, could you share with us how you evoke such emotion for the viewers of your artwork? Yes. So I think that's, it's key for me when I think about creating something i just want to be able to have the viewer create a story create a narrative just um it's more than just seeing something is is having that thought-provoking image is having to think and then feeling or feeling even before before you're thinking about it um so when i choose my subjects i usually try to um i do have my own story right i do have what, I'm th what I think it means for me, but I'm also thinking about the different meanings that it, it could have um, for the audience. And, and color is key to that, because when you think about if you want to depict a certain emotion, um, maybe it will be different if you choose oranges and yellows and um, that kind of warm side. Um, you can use blue for both, right? But choosing those colors to help create the narrative and emotion, that's something that, you know, really excites me. And it's part of my, my process in my paintings. That's wonderful. I should also mention when I was sharing how um, I was admiring the diversity of your work, I also admire the diversity of the people that you show in your work. There isn't a one particular kind of person or shape of person or tone of a person. You, you show humanity and it's beautiful and very emotion evoking. And that's something that I think everyone will just really appreciate learning more about you, your work and getting to know you, Luz D. In our current season of Bold Artist Podcast, we are talking about bold color and bold moves. You did already touch a little bit on the color here. Let's talk about bold moves. What is the boldest move or risk you feel like you've taken as an artist? Yes. When I think of bold moves, I actually think of some pretty good bold moves that I have dancing. But we're talking about painting. <laughs> you know, oh, you one... can talk about dancing too. <laughs> I think also music and dancing helps with, uh, yes. with you know, creating that too. Uh, but something definitely that I feel like it was a bold move uh, for me was creating the things and the stories and the narrative and, you know, just creating the art that came from my heart and I, that I wanted to do. Um, there was something when I started, I, I did portraits of celebrities and I did things that people would usually, or that we think that sell the most. Right. And people will tell me like, Oh, you know, you should paint the Mona Lisa or you should paint a uh, Picasso Frida. Um, and I did at the beginning and it was, I, I liked it, but it would, I was missing something. And it was because that's, that wasn't really what I wanted to do. I was missing giving the message to the viewer. I wanted to do art that had something more than just an initial recognition of, oh, you know, I know who this person is. And then, because usually you would, they would feel like, 
I know there's the likeness there. And then they talk about the technical aspect of the painting. Um, and then maybe about the feeling, but I wanted to do quite the opposite of that. I wanted to create that feeling and that question and have someone have to stop, not because they recognize the person, but because it makes them feel something. It makes, you know, it amazes them again through color or just the pose or, or the image. So doing, and that took risk, right? And that takes courage as well. Um, because when you have to do something that you feel like others may not, you know, really want or like, or maybe I'm not going to sell this, all of those thoughts I had initially, but I felt um, freedom, actually, when I started doing that. And the response that I got from the audience was amazing. It was even more and even better um, because, and I, I honestly think it's because it, it was it's coming from my heart, from what I want to do. Um, and that shows as well. So for definitely that's that's the biggest bold move for me. <laughs> and I hear it in what you just shared with us, the boldness of breaking away from people pleasing. And that is a fear that all of us creatives have of just like, how do I how do I pursue my creative arts and please the audience? And we have to come to this place of creating to create what's in us because that's like that's our like you were you use the word freedom that's our freedom and our right as artists is to express what's in here and bring out what's in here and I love hearing the story of you coming into that kind of freedom and and by you sharing the story here on the Bold Artist Podcast I feel it will also help others to step into that freedom where do, do you happen to remember a specific time or an instance where you you really made a deliberate choice to move away from people pleasing? Was there a certain piece of artwork or a certain show? Does anything come to your mind? Um, I think there's there's one piece that comes to mind. I did want it to portray kind of like my roots kind of where I came from. I used to, I remember, and I still do, by the way, sometimes I struggle with the subject that I'm going to choose um, to present, right, that, that I, that I want to do. And, but now it's mostly about, you know, is this the message that I want to, to, you know, send to give to the world versus is this going to sell? You know, are people going to like it? It's, it's more than that. Um, and so, so when I, started painting that it was just kind of like my first thought was i'm just doing this for me right let me try this it was kind of like a test let me try this but i it was so fulfilling um and 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 i have the support of my family i have to say that they you know when i talked to them about that initially in in the past as well they would be like you just do you you just do what you want to do and the right people who who need to have that and who need to see that will be there right um so again it took that courage for me to do that but that just taking the risk and trying and doing it was necessary to to you know to break from that kind of jail that i had in my mind um mm -hmm. and and have the freedom that i that we were just talking about I love that. Thank you so much for sharing about that and that whole people pleasing subject. It's really relevant. And now to backtrack a little bit, we had touched down on the subject of bold color. Can you can we go back to that and you expand a little bit on your approach to color, your relationship with color and even perhaps how you plan out a palette? Sure. Um, well, it's, it's one of my favorite topics, by the way. <laughs> oh, good. So, yeah, <laughs> color, definitely. So so here's the thing. The, the first thing that I do, um, because people do ask me that question a lot, like, how, you know, how do you choose your color palette? Like, how do you make sure that this is going to work? And so I use my imagination the first thing. Like, once I know the subject, what I try to do is kind of picture it in a few colors. So I try to imagine and see the outcome without even starting, um, you know, to 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 do the mixing or or choose the colors. Once I have that, then I have 
uh, kind of an idea of the predominant colors that I think that the image will will be uh, good. And I usually go to the color wheel, which I, I create my own based you know, on the paintings that the colors that I have. And one thing I notice is that I tend to do a lot of complementary color uh, schemes. I I didn't really realize that <laughs> oh, <laughs> until, okay. I, until I look at my paintings and started like kind of um, analyzing that. And I noticed, oh, I use a lot of, you know, blues with oranges or, you know, I, I use a lot of purples with uh, yellow. So <laughs> kind of I, I noticed that um, initially it wasn't intentional. But mm -hmm. one thing that happens with me is I may choose let's say complementary analogous uh, color palette, but that's just the beginning because then mm -hmm. I just flow through intuition. Like mm -hmm. I may feel like this needs uh, something different and I start adding different colors as I feel that the painting needs to have. So I may even do start with a certain color palette, but then as I am painting, I may add some mm -hmm. different colors or even not use some of the ones that I've uh, chosen. So, so it's kind of a mix of planning and mm -hmm. intuition when I'm I love when that. I'm working. I love it. that. I love meshing that, the planning and the <laughs> intuition. Now you mentioned a couple things. You mentioned using your imagination to plan the colors. Yeah, do definitely. you only dream about this in your head or do you ever sit down like at some form of technology, Photoshop or Procreate and plan out some colors that way? I do both. Um, sometimes I just use my imagination. So I, I, it's not like I dream it, but I'm thinking about it, right? Um, and then sometimes I use a, I use pastel, soft pastels. Um, it was one of the first mediums actually that I tried. Um, I love, I love how, easy they are to use and maybe if you, you do something you can just you know use your hand and remove it um, easily so I do two things with soft pastels which is I test the colors that I have in my mind um, and then you know I with that I I just can play with it and then ultimately have an idea of of how that could look like. But in honor of the truth, it's more that I use my imagination and just go for it. Yes. Um, than actually sketching and, or, you know, drawing something initially, mm -hmm. but I, I do use that as well. Yes. I don't, I don't use um, a technology like, like the iPads with uh, Procreate. I love seeing that and I'm very interested in exploring it. Um, but sometimes when I want to paint, I just want to go straight to the camera. Yes, I understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you also touched on the idea that you created your own color wheel out of the colors okay. that you have. So can you tell me a little bit about that process? Do you make yourself uh, little charts of color and color mixes or create the wheel? Yeah, tell the me more. Wheel. Um, I wish I actually have it like right behind the computer, my <laughs> color wheel. Um, so what I what I do, what I did was, so I have I have two color wheels. One is just let's say by brand. So if I have golden brand, for example, or Matisse, um, or Liquitex, whatever the brand is, I usually just do the color wheel to see, you know, the colors for the brand. But the one that I really use the most is I created a color wheel with all of the paint tubes that I have, with all the brands. Um, so I have all of my reds. It doesn't matter the brand, um, you know, in the reds. And I have um, yellows and blues and green and, and all of that. So I created that with my painting so I know exactly how the colors uh, will look. And so it's easy for me to look at it and choose the colors immediately by not not having to look at the tube or just do the test but just i'm looking <laughs> at it directly um yeah that I, is maybe that i can is send brilliant. a picture or um you know for that you can use if you if you want to share you know with with the audience but i think it's a great exercise to just have your color wheel from every single tube of paint that you have do you have a favorite tube of paint right now one that you were just like so <laughs> excited for and what brand and 
paint color is that? <laughs> oh my God, I do have one. Um, I'm obsessed with Design Cyan by Matisse. Um, it's a, it's a, let's say a, a fatal blue with, and I don't know if I pronounce fatal, fatalo. <laughs> right. Fatalo. I say fatalo. <laughs> fatalo blue. Um, with a touch of green. Um, that's mm -hmm. the design cyan. And so it creates just this beautiful greenish kind of blue that mixes beautifully with other colors. Um, and it was like, um, yeah, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to use this cyan now. I'm just uh, from this brand. And since I started, since I used it the first time, I've been like, yeah, I've had to buy probably three or four since the first time that I used the brand. And yeah, I almost wow. use it in all of my paintings. <laughs> so for the listener, how do you spell the name of, of that color? C Y A N. And then design okay. is D E S I N G. Design Cyan. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. From By Matisse. Matisse. Yes. Well, thank you for that little tip. It sounds exciting. I just, I love to hear what artists are like, just really obsessing about right now. <laughs> and we love, and we love those kinds of questions. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so Luz, do, do you have some words of encouragement for an artist who's out there, perhaps someone who's just beginning and perhaps they really admire your work and they feel like, they're never going to reach where you're at, or they just feel like they're behind somehow or, or having a hard time in their art practice. Do you have any words of encouragement to give a beginner like that a, a boost of morale? I do. Um, I, I would say it's about a few things. Persistence. It's about a high level of interest and it's self-confidence. Just trying, even if you think you will fail, actually, if you fail, you will learn. So it's the best experience that you would have. It's actually the best class that you can give to yourself is just try it um, and be persistent. Uh, that's something that I've learned not only for doing for my paintings, but for anything that I, I do in life. Sometimes we just get scared or we may think we're not going to be good enough. Um, but none of that is true. And everyone has their gift and their unique voice that, you know, people need and that they can share with, with the world and, and people need that. So you have to think about it in, in that way and not, not give up and just continue to, to, to search for the ultimate outcome that, that you want, which by the way, may not be exactly what you expected at the beginning, but may be even better, or it may be exactly what, what you need to accomplish. Um, so, you know, just keep trying, never give up. If you see my early paintings, um, oh my God, you should see it. <laughs> uh, so it's a, it's a story, there's a story to tell. Um, yes. I had the courage mm. to share it, to, to do it, first mm. of all. And then mm -hmm. to share that mm -hmm. um, and, you know, have people love it, have people not like it. And sometimes I look back, I look at those first paintings, which I keep. Um, it's a reminder of how, how people can grow. And so sometimes I, go, I, I don't know how I put that <laughs> out there to the world, right? That's the way that I see it now. <laughs> yes. Um, but those are the reminders that everything is possible and you can improve if you put your heart to it. Um, mm -hmm. you will achieve what, what you, what you want. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for those words. They hit home for mm -hmm. sure. And I know our listeners, um, that will resonate and encourage them for sure. So it sounds in what you said that you're very open to surprises and <laughs> open to letting your journey unfold. I'm I wondering, Luz D, if there has been a surprise highlight in your art career that was just like, what? This is out of this world. What would that highlight of your career be? <laughs> well, that's a tough question. I think oh. I've had, I have some moments um, 
and some opportunities that I felt like, you know, it felt, they felt to me like that. I would say one of the most recent ones was I, I did create a painting uh, for Jasmine Camacho Queen, which was the gold medal winner for Puerto Rico. Um, you know, she chose to represent Puerto Rico, even though, you know, the, her parents are the ones who, who, you know, who lived there, who were raised there. Um, and I thought that that was so amazing of her. I wanted to uh, do a painting for her. I did it. And then she communicated it with me. So I got to her. Wow. Um, she was so grateful. So by the way, wow. she's very humble, such a great, nice person. Mm -hmm. and, and she wanted to have my painting. And that was really like, that was a highlight for me, definitely. Um, because that, that definitely was not my highlight. initial intention, right? Um, yes. But it was really wonderful. Because um, mm -hmm. again, just when you can provoke that and, and make someone feel a certain way and, and, and receive that gratitude is just such a satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is definitely a highlight. I love that story. How special. So Luzdi, thank you so much for being on the Bold Artist Podcast today. We have so enjoyed hearing your heart and a little behind the scenes of your bold color and bold moves <laughs> and the bravery and courage it's taken you to start and become who you are today. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And um uh, again, it's it's been a pleasure to be here and I hope that we continue to connect. Yes, it's been a pleasure to have you. Thanks for being here, watching and listening to our interview with Luzdi Rivera. We would love to know what your favorite takeaway from today's show was. If you're on YouTube, leave us a comment or send us a message on Instagram at Bold Artist Podcast and tell us what your favorite aha moment was. For me, I love Luzdi's enthusiasm, and I'm gonna definitely be making one of those personalized color wheels that she suggested. And her words of encouragement resonated with me. If you fail, you will learn. If you fail, you will learn. We need to not be afraid to try and fail because that's how we learn. Learning is part of the process. Here at the Bold Artist Podcast, we're giving artists voices. Till next time, keep creating.